Yeah, so Till Ronenberg is a professor at the Institute of Medical Psychology at the Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich. So thanks very much, Till, for helping us out with the podcast. You're welcome. So how did you first get interested in circadian research? I was uh, friends with children of one of the pioneers of the field. I went to school with them, and um, so I got interested in in, in visiting them. They lived um, in the Institute for Behavioral Psycho- uh, Physiology, Physiology of the Max Planck Institute, and I got more and more interested in what their dad did, um, and he uh, did the bunker experiments, and so I started to work for for them in all my school holidays, and that's um, how I got to, to know circadian rhythms. That's about um, 50 years ago. And you've certainly had a long career researching in this area. One of the models I really like that you talk about is this three different clocks that we all are slaves to. Can you just talk us through those different three clocks and your concepts around that? Sure. They're actually not, not very very much my concepts. It's, it's, it's too obvious to to brag that um, I've come up with a concept. It's, it's plain insight once you, once you look at it. The clock we know best nowadays is the clock we can see on our phones, um, around our wrists, at, um, on the, our buildings and so forth. It's the social clock. And we'll come back why the social clock is special in many ways. The, the second clock we do know when we see um, the sunrise or the sunset. Uh, and that's the sun clock. So the rotation of the Earth creates a temporal structure which uh, we live in. And midday by that clock is um, when the sun is um, highest, and midnight is um, exactly halfway between sunset and, and sunrise. Now we have two clocks already. In the old days, uh, the, the social clock and the sun clock were the same. But then we started to travel, uh, not only live in in villages and walk to the next village, but we took a train and and we realized that we had to reset our clocks and also um, reschedule the entire train timetable uh, every time we moved from one place to the other because, of course, every the social clock was like the sun clock and therefore it was impractical. So in the ni- uh, late 19th century, the world got together and divided the, the world into time zones and thereby created the social time, which is not exactly anymore, which is, it still can be at some locations and at some time, but yes, can still be uh, um, the same as some time, but in most of the cases, it's not the same anymore. The third clock is our biological clock. We have developed, and not only we, but practically all other, other organisms as well, uh, developed an internal clock um, that claims that it can predict what's happening. The predictions are very, very uh, fundamental and therefore true. Namely, the sun will come up in, in so, so many hours and the sun will set in so, so many hours and the temperature will rise. Enemies will become more numerous or um, flower petal, flower, uh, flowers open. Uh, and all these things can, are in a way predictable because they happen within a daily framework that is predictable. The biological clock listens mainly to the sun clock because it sets itself or it synchronizes itself to the rotation of the Earth, Earth via the night and darkness. And uh, therefore, the sun clock sets the, the biological clock. But that doesn't mean that the biological clock is always the same in all people and it always is equal to the sun clock because now the biological clock is a very complex system, um, a function, a biological function in our in our body. The minute we have a, a complex function, several genes or many genes are involved and if when many genes are involved, we have genetics and therefore it Different individuals um, show different expression of of uh, their clock, and the different expressions of the biological clock are visible in form of so-called chronotypes. Namely, some people have a clock that embeds itself into the light-dark cycle very early, um, like you, um, and others have um, clocks that embed themselves intermediate um, compared to um, those who embed them, their clocks very late. And that makes um, a distribution that ranges from the extreme larks to the extreme owls, as these chronotypes are called, in, in other words, by many people. So those are the three clocks. Um, maybe I should add uh, why the 
social clock can be so fo- so mistaken or so false, not only because it now has to stretch over a long range of long longitudes where the sun is is different, but um, the social clock is the same. It also has political consequences because some countries, although they should belong into one of the original time zones, have chosen to belong to another time zone and an additional falsification of social time versus sun time um, is due to changing clocks in spring and autumn. So can you talk us through some examples of where there are those marked differences between sun time and social time and how that impacts? So in Europe, many, many countries are in the same time zone. It stretches somewhere from the eastern border of Poland to the western border of Spain. Um, of Spain. Portugal is in the Greenwich Mean Time Zone, but um, from the, the eastern border of Poland to the western border of Spain, practically all countries are in the Central European Time Zone. And that's a huge area, so that um, when people in Galicia look at their clocks and the clocks say it's midnight, the social clock says midnight, by some time it is only half past 10 in summer and only um, half past 11 in, in winter. Uh, and those uh, are huge differences. So the middle of the night um, is, the social clocks claim that it is the middle of the night, one and a half or two and a half hours before it actually is the middle of the night. And of course the middle of the night is, as I just said, one of the Light givers, um, one of the signals that the circadian clocks use to synchronize. So there's always going to be a discrepancy between the circadian clocks and the social clock. So China is another example that you talk about. China um, has decided to have the entire empire um, under the same time zone, but it stretches, I think, over four time zones from the most eastern border from Beijing to the most western border, somewhere in Tibet. Therefore, People can only sort of fake time. They, they meet for dinner at 1 o'clock in the morning or, or get up at 11 o'clock because most of them just can't live by, um, by a, a, a social time that is four hours away from their sun time. There's another social construct around time, which is daylight saving time. It's only an hour. Surely it shouldn't make such a difference. What makes you say that? Where does this sit only one hour and where does it shouldn't make any difference come from? In order to ask that question, in order to ask that question or make that statement, you must already have thought about what other people may say and that it's um, not that good to change the clocks, which I've which I've already mentioned when I said it's uh, changing clocks in spring and autumn adds another falsification of the social time away from 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 some time. It's only an hour. I have difficulties um, with that statement, advancing the clocks by one hour. It actually is a, um, a decision made by someone that everybody goes to work an hour. It's nothing else. In order so that people don't really know that or don't realize that, we change our clocks. So we still go to work at nine. But in effect, we are going to work at eight suddenly from one day to the other. And that is an hour's change. The people who like that are predominantly larks, early early birds, because they, they wake up early in, in, in summer anyhow, and they, they like to get home um, while it is still light and like the long evenings, which are not longer than before or without the time change, it's just that we go to work an hour earlier and therefore we come home an hour earlier and therefore we have longer time at home. But the late types have difficulty with that concept because um, they have to go, they already, before the time change in spring, um, have to set an alarm to be able to wake up. And if you set an alarm, it's very simple. Your body clock hasn't slept to its biological end of sleep. And now they have to go to work an hour earlier meaning they have to cut in their biology even more for, for one hour. And that is not something they get easily accustomed to or adjusted to. And many people who claim it's only one hour compare that to traveling into another time zone. And we can do that. For example, we can travel from, from London to Paris, which is also an advance of one hour. And nobody has great difficulties with that 
But what people don't understand when they uh, cite the travels, the, the traveling one hour to, to the east, um, that you travel away from where you are and you get a new light dark cycle and you give um, your clocks a new light dark cycle so that they can actually uh, um, adjust to that new time zone. Whereas um, daylight savings time is going to work an hour earlier without going anywhere. And therefore, um, the, circad the, the body clocks, uh, the circadian clocks, just don't, they ignore this is going to, to work an hour or to school an hour earlier, and they continue to um, have difficulties with aligning to the social uh, timing. Yeah, thank you. You've made a very good case for why it is an issue, and I, I agree with you. I think it, daylight saving is something that humans don't adapt to readily and causes significant problems. So what would be an alternative if we were to abolish daylight saving? Before we go to alternatives, um, we would I would like to go into more detail what DST really means. Most people focus on the times when, when, when the clocks are changed. And uh, it's known from the literature that, um, there are, that many things increase in, in, in ac acute um, uh, response to the the clock change. The heart attacks become more frequent. Um, some um, statistics show that uh, traffic, lethal traffic accidents become more frequent. Um, there are um, identifiable changes um, um, in, the, in the stock market on the Monday after the change. It's actually on that on that day, uh, one can show that, that even sentencing by judges and by courts is more severe than, than in any other type of year. So there are a lot, lot of acute um, responses to, to the term change. But for me, these responses are not the, the main bad situation we put ourselves in, because the main bad situation we put ourselves in is that we we increase what, what I have called social jet lag by one hour. Social jet lag means it's a measurement of the discrepancy between the actual sun time and the the therefore the body clock time and the social time, and if they're discrepant, which they are when you have to wake up with an alarm clock, for example, if they are discrepant, that is not good for health. But there's another way to look at that, and that um, way to look at uh, the effects of DST has surfaced over the last uh, one or two years, because what people started to understand is that within time zones there are gradients of health. And the best health you find at the eastern border of the time zone. And the worst health you find at the western border of the time zone. Now, when we switch to daylight savings time, we do essentially nothing else but to move the eastern border of our time zone one hour further east, which means we all have to live further away from the eastern border of our time zone. And that will cause more cancer, more metabolic illnesses, more heart diseases. Where whatever you look at will be increased in its chances to come up in, in people by living further in the west of the time zone. And that's exactly what we're doing with DST. That's a very compelling argument. How do you go talking to government regulators and uh, people about, okay, what's an alternative? You know, let's not do DST. It's very difficult because it's it's a very um, what I call a hedonic um, question. People just like it. Many people like it. They say, um, "I like these long evenings," which is fine. But I always compare that with people who smoke. Many of the health deficits by smoking are um, not the obvious ones, like lung cancer or throat cancer or something like that. Many of them are um, as obscure um, and and long and, and long lasting um, as the effects that we find across time zones. So there's nothing where we can say, okay, your chances to to, to develop the lung cancer will increase by um, twofold if you if you if you smoke. It's much smaller incidences and effects, but they're all there. And um, let's leave aside the, the, the drastic effects of smoking. And then you have somebody who likes smoking. And he says, I like smoking. And this person doesn't take into account that um, um, there is evidence that smoking, besides the, the very 
uh, terrible indirect effects of smoking on, on lung cancer and so forth, that smoking is increasing the chances that you get a lot of other diseases. So if somebody says, I like those long evenings, I say it's the same as if a smoker said, I like smoking. Both are correct on a hedonic level where you say, I just like this. But they both do not take into account as statements that there is um, evidence that both are bad for people. And the small effects of of health deficits we find within time zones are multiplied by the number of people and the number of times they are exposed to this condition. So um, over time, they become um, very, very expensive experiments by, by society. You can't do very much with governments because governments um, go by voters, and the voters, um, are very very many voters are like, like uh, DST. Uh, so we can write to them, we can show them the evidence, but um, systems are very sluggish in accepting scientific evidence. It's quite astonishing how little politicians are actually interested in science. They are very much interested in economics and in, in votes by people, but they are not very very interested in the scientific evidence that is for or against a decision they, they should make. That is a fact by itself. So we can only propose things. And, and the obvious pro proposition is that you go back to standard time. Let's not call it winter time as little as we should call the DST summertime because these are, those are all misleading labels. It's standard time and the original idea of standard time was that in the middle of the time zone, the middle of the time zone sets where the social time should be for that time zone, which means the social time is never further away from sun time than half an hour. To the east, they're earlier by half an hour. To the west, they're later by half an hour. So we should return to standard time because thereby we reduce, potentially reduce the discrepancy between sun time and social time, which then translates into discrepancies of, of body clocks and social time, but uh, reduce them to theoretically to half an hour. And we should also reduce the extension of time zones. So Spain should be in the same time zone as France, as England. And Germany should be in, in the, can remain in the central European time zone. That's it. That's actually the time zone they are in. But even the Benelux countries like, like Belgium and Holland and the Netherlands and Luxembourg, they should be together with England in the GMT, GMT time. Portugal should be one further West than GMT. They are on GMT now, but they should be one further west um, than GMT, as should be Ireland and um, Iceland. They all should be in, in a time zone that is one further west than, than GMT. One has to add, I think, that we know that clocks in Australia, due to uh, people being more exposed to, to sunlight, are a bit earlier, and therefore the, the um, problem is not as great as it is in in Europe, uh, especially in Northern Europe, uh, where people spend far less time outside and more time inside. And the difficulty is that the, the weaker we, weaker light and dark signals we give to our clocks, the later these clocks become, at least in most people. The extreme early types become even earlier under um, weak sidegiver conditions. Weak sidegiver conditions are... And no real light during the day because we are in buildings and no real darkness um, at night because we switch on the light. That that reduces the strength of, of the signal that can um, synchronize clocks or that clocks can synchronize to. And that's why the larks become, the extreme larks become even earlier and the rest of all the chronotypes becomes progressively later. And that's why um, we are all too late for the social times, um, especially when they are switched to, to DSD. Great. Thanks for your time. Okay. Bye.